one more tool for dealing with differential equations, at least first order ones, that we cannot solve just yet is to use Euler's method, which is a numerical method for approximating solutions. Just like we learned how to approximate integrals earlier, we can approximate solutions to differential equations by applying a little bit of simple geometry to the situation. So for this differential equation, we don't know what the solution is exactly, but we can imagine that there is an exact solution out there. So the initial condition is that y of zero equals one. So that would be somewhere up here. And then there is an actual solution, even if we don't know what it is. So let me imagine that the actual solution looks like this. So it's this nice, perfect curve, but we don't know what that is. We can draw a slope field, which will give us a general sense of which way this function is going. And that idea is helpful as we start thinking about using Euler's method. So what we know is we know the initial condition and we know how to find the slope at any point that we're given. So let's start there. We know that at zero, one, we're on the exact solution. We know we're on it at that point. And we know which direction the actual solution travels from here, which means we can approximate this solution with straight line segments. Let me show you what I mean. From zero, one, we know that the actual solution is traveling in this direction. And we could keep traveling in that direction forever and pretty quickly our solution would deviate from the actual solution. So if we just try to use a single straight line segment to approximate this solution, we'd have pretty poor results. But on the other hand, if we only travel a short distance, there's not much time for our approximate solution to deviate from the actual solution. So we'll just take a little short hop forward and then stop. And we can figure out where we are at this point because we know where we started. We know we started at zero, one, and we know what slope, what direction we took. So we can apply a little bit of basic geometry to figure out where we are now. And then we just repeat the process because at this new point, we can again calculate the slope that the solution would be traveling. Now we know the actual solution doesn't exactly pass through this point, but it gets pretty close. And so we know that when we apply this point to the differential equation, the slope we get won't be exactly right, but it'll be close enough that our approximate solution should track with the actual solution more or less. So we would do something like move off in this direction and then stop again and then recalculate. And at each step, we recalculate the slope based on the point we're at. And notice in this rough drawing that the solution starts to deviate more and more the further we travel forward. The further we try to take this prediction, the more our approximate solution is going to deviate from the exact solution. But as long as we're okay with a little bit of error, as long as we're okay with an approximate solution, we can work with this and we can do pretty well. Now you might imagine if we made those steps shorter, and we took shorter hops between points, our solution would also be more accurate. So we can tweak the step size, but we understand that at the end of the day, our approximate solution is always going to be a little bit off of the actual solution, and we have to just live with that reality. But if all we need is an approximation, we can do fairly well. So the structure of a problem in general is that we'll be given a first order equation like this one. So we'll have something like y prime equals something, whatever that is. And then we'll be given an initial condition, something like y of some t value equals some y value. In other words, we have an initial point t0 y0. In our example, t0 was 0 and y0 was 1. So our initial point was the point 0, 1. 
We'll also be given a step size, which we'll call H. And if you think back to your Calc 1 days, you've seen an H before when you started working with derivatives. And this is very similar. It's all based off of the same foundation. And this H is like a delta X or delta T. It's a small difference in the horizontal direction. It's a small step forward. And then we'll be looking for the solution at some other T value. So for instance, we might be asked, what is Y of one? So we're trying to predict what's the Y value gonna be at T equals one. So we'd be moving out here to t equals 1, and our approximate solution would be relatively close to the exact solution. So that's our setup. We have a differential equation where we have y prime equals some expression, and then we're given an initial point, t0 and y0, and a step size, and we're looking for y at a point further on. So let me show you the setup that we're going to use to solve this example. What we're basically going to build is a table of points, and these points are going to be these that are highlighted along the path. And so we'll just continue as far as we need to to get to the t value we're interested in. So we would keep stepping forward until t equals 1 in our example. The formulas I'll give you first the t values are pretty simple. If we know t0, for instance, the next t value, we'll call it t1, is going to be that t value plus h. So to get from every t value to the next one, you just add h. If your step size is 0.2, for instance, your t values would start at 0, and then go to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then 1, and you would stop. The y values are pretty similar. One y value is going to be the previous y value plus something. So here's one y value. The next one will start with the previous y value and then we'll add h times the derivative at the previous y value. Now let's see why that's true. We're starting at one y value and then to move to the next one, we'll add to it a little vertical distance that equals h times the slope. Let me draw you a quick picture to show you why, but these are the formulas that we'll use, and it'll, the pattern will be consistent from there on to find all the other values. So really simply, if we zoom in on one little segment, and this has a slope of y prime, so here's t0, y0, and here's t1, y1. In general, if you remember the familiar slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the difference in y values divided by the difference in x values, we need to adjust this a little bit for our notation in this current situation. So instead of m for the slope, we're calling this y prime of zero, it's the slope according to this initial point. So starting at this initial point, we predict the slope forward from there. And then instead of y2 minus y1, we're using y1 and y0, but it's the same idea. We have the difference in y values, the rise, the difference in elevations. And then instead of x2 and x1, we have t1 minus t0, the difference in the horizontal distances. Now, of course, t1 minus t0, the step forward, is also just equal to h. So we could write y prime equals y1 minus y0 over h. And then if you solve for y1, what you get is exactly this. So that's the really basic justification for these formulas. But if you want to take more time and delve more into that and draw the picture for yourself to make sure you understand why that is true, you can dig into that a little bit more. For our purposes, we're just going to write down these formulas in general, and we'll say every t value, t sub n, is going to be the previous t value plus h. 
which in practice is very simple. We just add h repeatedly and we build our list of t values. And each y value starts out the same way, the previous y value, plus h times the derivative at the previous point. And as we work through an example, you'll see how this works. These formulas look kind of scary, but they're really pretty simple. And there's a process that we go through, an algorithm that repeats using these formulas over and over again. So let's take a look at our example. We had the example y prime equals t plus y. We were told that y of zero equals one. And we wanna find y of one, or I'll say estimate y of one using Euler's method with h equals 0 0.2. So what we're gonna do is build a small table with values of t and y, these points that we are traversing as we build this approximate solution. So our first point is t equals zero, y equals one. That just comes directly from our initial condition. The next t value is going to be 0 0.2, and then 0 0.4, and then 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one. Notice what we're doing is for each t value, we're adding h to get the next t value in the series. And we keep going until we get to t equals one, because that's where we are looking for the solution. For the y values, we have to do a little bit more work, but it's actually not that much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to track the value of y prime at each point as well. And the value of y prime here, y prime will be t plus y, just using this differential equation here. t plus y here is zero plus one or one. And then the next y value will be the previous y value plus h times the derivative at that point. In practice, what this means is this y value will be the previous y value plus h times this y prime here. So it'll be one plus 0 0.2 times one, which gives us 1.2. And then we can find the y prime value here, the derivative is just again, t plus y using that differential equation. So at each stage we find y prime using the differential equation, and then we find the next y value based off of that y prime value using this step here. So this y prime is 1.4, and then this value will be the previous y value plus 0 0.2 times the previous y prime. So we'll have 1.2 plus 0 0.2 times 1.4, and it turns out that equals 1.48. And then we just repeat, and this starts to get a little bit repetitive, but we don't have that far to go. The next y prime is just the sum of these two. Again, it's not always gonna be the sum of them, but it will follow whatever this differential equation form is given to us. And then the next y value will be this plus 0.2 times this, which is 1.86. And then the next y prime will be 2.46. And then we can repeat again. You should get 2.35 for the next y value, 3.15 for the next y prime. And then finally, we get 2.98. And that's the answer we're looking for. So we're looking for the approximate value of y when t equals one. And so our answer is that y of one is approximately 2.98. Without ever finding a solution to that differential equation, without ever finding the closed form, we were able to approximate the solution at a certain point. So graphically what this looks like, if we were to plot these points that we've found would be Something like this. We had 0, 1, and then 0 0.2, 1.2. 
more or less the points look something like this. And what we found is that at t equals 1, y was approximately 3, about 2.98. So again, without ever finding a closed form solution, we're able to approximate a solution at some future point in time. And by building this table out further, we could even sketch a picture just like we sketched manually using slope fields. We can develop approximate solutions kind of as far out as we want to do. So Euler's method can get a little bit tedious, but the general approach is you're just bouncing back and forth between y and y prime each time you find y prime using the differential equation, and then you use that to find the next y value using this formula here, where you take y plus h times y prime, and that gives you the following y value. And you just repeat that as far as you need to in the table.